So here's the test run we did in aluminum. And now we're gonna give it a go in some high carbon steel, which should be much more exciting. So let's give it a go. Well, that didn't go well. Not off to a very good start. This is, however, the first tool I've broken in a while. So I feel like I'm doing pretty good, but center a little too hard there. It's broke off this drill. So this is actually 120,000 drill, and I do not have another one. So, <laughs> uh, it's pretty well, it's pretty broken up. Big old chunk taken out of it right there, if it'll focus. Um, so I'd have to cut it back to there and try to sharpen it. Um, may as well try, if I can't get it, um, an eighth inch drill should be fine. Man, these little bits are real hard to sharpen. Uh, I think I got it as even as I could, and not much to lose. Doesn't work, I'll go up to an eighth inch. What do you do? What do you do? Cooking, I tell you. So now my dilemma is uh, this. I yeah, I got all the drill bit out of there, so I don't know why why it did that. I must just not have had clearance right. It's I just can't see it that well when it's this small. Um, but wow, yeah, that was cooking. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the eighth inch drill. I have some new ones of those. I'm also gonna use some oil. Um, do an eighth inch carbide end mill. I just don't really want to. Um, gosh, yeah, this must just be a lot harder than the last ones I did. Would be my guess. Because, yeah, I just cooked a brand new drill. Um, I freaking drilled through parallels that were not this hard. It doesn't, like, the drill scratches it just fine. I mean, the little drill bit made it through just fine, so I must have just, when we heated that up, it got, must have hardened it up or something. Um, yeah, let me grab an eighth inch end mill. Or even better, I have a three millimeter end mill, which is like 120 thou which is what I wanted originally, so. I just, I don't like plunging end mills, especially into steel, so I'm just gonna go really slow. Hope for the best. Looks like we made it through. I'm gonna do that with all the rest of these, and then I'll go back to a regular drill. I got pushed up in the holder. So I retouched off 
and re-ran that whole contour, not contour, but it was a flow uh, tool path to uh, get the shape of the blade. So I, I had to rerun the whole thing. It was off by like 10,000. So I'm guessing the end mill, when it plunged, it must have flipped up. I was using a quarter inch ER20 collet to hold a six millimeter uh, ball end mill. So I, I switched uh, the quarter inch collet to a six millimeter collet. It should, I would think that it would have been able to handle the, what is it, like 10 or 15,000 difference between six millimeters and quarter inch, but who knows, I, I, I changed it up to a six millimeter collet, ran it all, and it seemed to have done just fine. So now we're just cutting out the blade, uh, just doing a contour, I have a bunch of tabs to hold the blade so we can flip it. Alright, so I have one more program left. It's a 16th inch end mill, and it's just to finish this hole. So that's actually the stop when the blade flips open. It hits a dowel inside of the handle, and that hole is supposed to match the dowel, which is an eighth inch. That's why I made it 120 thou so that I could file it to fit just right so the blade's nice and tight when it's open. Um, so I'm hoping because it kind of got, like, not really melted, but it pushed the metal. Um, so I'm hoping my little end mill, I don't even know if it'll be able to cut it. This crap is super hard, especially right here. I mean, it's just, it feels like glass. Um, so hopefully my 16th inch end mill can handle it. Um, I don't know what else. I would do, I guess I could just use a eighth inch end mill. Yeah, I could do that, that'd work fine. But we're gonna try with the uh, little end mill first and then we're gonna flip her on over and uh, uh, do the other side. And these tabs here, you can see I just broke through some of the areas, but this is like paper thin. So these tabs, I did a bunch this time. Uh, they're meant to hold the blade so that I can flip it and machine the other side. Um, the alternative would be to make like soft jaws and it, it would be, this would be a pretty difficult part to hold in soft jaws. Um, the only reference surface is right here. That's the only flat surface now. Uh, it's doable, but it would be, it'd be rough. So here's how we're looking. Just finished. Looks freaking awesome. Um, I'm going to go cut these tabs. I probably could have done a program that cut away most of them after I finished doing all the the uh, 3D work. I don't know, I'm sure there's a word for what this is, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Can't think of it right now, it's super late. <laughs> Been doing this all night. Pretty cool design though, I think. <laughs> Toot my own horn here. <laughs> all right, here she is. Got it all cleaned up, polished up. And ready, all I need now is the pin and the button. I've already got the spring and all that stuff ready to go. Um, but yeah, I think it looks, I think it looks pretty dang good. Um, it is very smooth, but those, those little grooves, you can just barely fill them. Uh, I don't know why in the camera it looks kind of speckled, but yeah, I guess it kind of does to my eye too. But this will all be polished with some Scotch Brite. But uh, yep, there she is. Flip her around the right way. Bingo, bango, mango. <laughs> um, so this knife, I was gonna try using this little. Uh, uh, I can't remember what they call them. I ordered it from these people, knife kits. Um, they sell these. It's a nylon impregnated with some other stuff. So I cut a groove, so this will be... 
this will be what the blade is riding on, on one side. Um, I can't do it on both sides because we got the spring on the other side. And yeah, I'll make another little video once, once it's all together and we're anodizing and hardening. But for now, yep, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you later.